his article is, as Isaiah Wynn ready to take over left tackle. Now, this is a poor position because this is Tom Brady's blind side, guys. Um, he missed the entire season last year because he tore his Achilles um, in uh, training camp last year. And um, he will be taking the spot. Um, you know, he, he's going to have big shoes to fill. Because, again, the Patriots declined to sign another proven veteran following Jared Vodemir's swift retirement, leaving Cole Croston, Dan Skipper, Federick Lane, and rookies Yanni Katis and Tyree St. Louis as their only reserve tackles. Again, they let some tackles go uh, from last year. Didn't put in one. Yes, he did. Uh, so that's going to be the interesting part, too, guys, is can the blind side – for, for Brady, can can they can they stay? Can they got to get someone there? Because you know, you have a great quarterback, guys, but if you can't protect him, it's not going to be good. So they got to sure that up during during camp, and I'm sure that Belichick and the boys will figure that out. Uh, the fourth thing they were talking about is our running game. Can Sony Michelle stay healthy? Um, uh, he was placed on the physical, unable to perform list. Uh, he had some off-season surgery. He will miss at least a part of training camp. This is the second consecutive year. Quick throws, yeah. Well, that'll be Edelman will be there. So if Ed gets back, we need to get him back. Um, rookie Damian Harris will be surprised when the Patriots nabbed him in the third round of this April draft. Benefit most from Michelle's absence. Uh, he, again, was he's from Alabama. Of course, we have James White, Rex Burkhead. I think we'll be okay, and then they had special teams and Brandon Bolden as well. Um, yeah, it's true. Yeah, he does throw quick. He's not. He doesn't hold on to the ball too long. Um, so I, I think if if Sony can stay healthy, guys, I think we'll be okay as far as the running position. Um, so I, I don't. I think if he can stay healthy, we'll be okay. I, I think we'll be all right if we if. I don't think he will be missing any part of the regular season while he stays healthy during the regular season. So maybe missing camp and missing a couple games, you know, obviously you got to get him in for preseason to kind of get the reps going and get, you know, get your feet back underneath you. Uh, the fifth thing he talked about was, can Michael Bennett take Trey Flowers' position? Uh, can he be the new Trey Flowers? Uh, Bennett didn't, I think if I heard, saw today, he didn't show up for camp today. So that's interesting. Um, but again, we'll have to see again, last year, he had nine sacks for the Eagles. Um, there, that is, were more than any Patriot recorded since Chandler Jones, who put up 12 and a half in 2015. So again, that will be interesting to see if he can fill that void, uh, that they did with Trey Flowers going, uh, moving on. Um, and we brought, and then, you know, see where they're, they're hoping that third round pick Chase Winovich, and I know Adam will crazy he's a michigan boy um he's gonna be a big part guys i have a funny feeling we're gonna see a lot of chase this year flowers and edge rusher i believe so it doesn't see because flowers now has been detroit um so that's it um i don't know i i think he was an edge rusher uh but again I think Chase Winovich is going to be a big part, guys. So uh, look out for him this year, especially he did very well in Michigan. So be well. So they brought back Jamie Collins. What's what's your guys' opinion on them? The Patriots bringing back Jamie Collins, a linebacker. They traded him to Cleveland. Now he's back. I think it's a good thing. It'll he'll, he'll help out Dante Hightower and that and that you know linebacker crew um, that they have. Uh, you have. And Van Noy is another one, man. Van Noy is a stud, dude. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think Winovich will be able to do that. Kyle Van Noy will be a stud again this year, guys. So we'll have to wait and see how they do with the linebacker crew. But I think um, I think Jamie Collins coming back is big, is big for them. I really honestly do. And then, again, the ever question, too, is who's going to be the starting, court, uh, starting quarterback? Excuse me. Who's going to be the backup quarterback behind Tom? Is it going to be Brian Hoyer? Or is it going to be third round, uh, fourth round rookie pick Jared Stidham? And I had a conversation with uh, Von Allen um, a while back about Jared Stidham. 
uh, when I had him on my show about three or four weeks ago, I had him talk about him. And I think I got to see Jared a lot, guys, being that I'm from the South and we watch a lot of SEC football. I got to see Auburn a lot because, again, they play Alabama and Alabama is the number one team in the SEC, has been for years. Um, if you get a chance to read an article I wrote about uh, the top power five conferences, uh, who I thought was going to win the power, win those five conferences. So we'll have to see uh, how that goes. Um, again, is it possible for Stidham to beat out Brian Hoyer? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, I think there might, there might, might have an opportunity for doing that. I mean, there, you know, there's no doubt in my mind that he can't, um, he can't do that. Uh, the eighth thing guys is there was 10 of these, uh, which cornerback will make the cut? Uh, they have the cuts could be looming. Uh, Stefan Gilmore, obviously he's not 40 JC Jackson and 2019 second round pick Jaquan Williams are all locks. Uh, Jonathan Jones, Keeson Clawson, both have made value to the Super Bowl winning teams. The wild card guys is Duke Dawson, the 2008 second rounder who did play a snap, um, as a rookie, despite returning from injury reserve in November. Uh, so Dawson could be on the outside looking in. Uh, plays in most really deserves to stay over Jones and crossing two stud special teamers. If Dawson is up to the task, the Patriots could look to trade Jones, uh, who showed off his first and 30 by playing safety against the Rams in the Super Bowl 53, which we, we all know who won that game. Um, the ninth thing, guys, coming in, um, well, who's going to win the funner battle? Uh, second straight summer, and come, Ryan Allen must fend off a challenge in order to keep his spot on the 53-man roster. Uh, the, this year, in case they have Corey Jorquiz, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that last name correctly. Uh, this undrafted rookie, Allen, easily vanquished in 2018. Patriot trade up to the fifth round to draft Stanford's Jake Bailey, who is not only younger and cheaper than Allen, but also an extensive kick experience which could utilize to lighten the 35-year-old uh, Stefan uh, Gorkowski's workload. And, of course, guys, that's our main kicker. Um, the Patriots also need a kick returner following Cordell Patterson's offseason exit. Candidates include Berrios, Burkhead, Dorsett, uh, both Harris's, Devin McCourty, and possible Sony Michelle. So, again, that's another thing, too, that we have to kind of keep an eye on, too, with that. And the last one, guys, is – Will the undrafted rookie streak continue? At least one UDFA has cracked the Patriots in week one. The roster, again, uh, this includes current Pats, Allen Jones, Jackson, and center David Andrews. Our pick this year, they said, or his pick this year is Myers, credible productive slot receiver at NC State, who received some extra attention from Brady and offensive corner Josh McDaniels during minicamp. So look for him to make the team, guys, and that'll definitely help out uh, that roster. Um, that definitely will help out the Patriots wide receiver roster um, as well. Um, but anyway, guys, so let's see right now. I, I'm going to go ahead and touch about, touch a little bit upon, I'm going to switch gears here and talk about the MLB Hall, uh, Hall of Famers that went in this past week. And if you guys didn't see it, uh, the inductees were Harold Baines more than should have been in there. Lee Smith, another one. Edgar Martinez, if you guys didn't get a chance to see him play in Seattle, was also amazing. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, yep. Uh, Mike Mussina, who was a pitcher for the Orioles and the Yankees, uh, he was more than that. Mariano Rivera was the first uh, guy to receive 100% of the vote. So he was definitely in there. And then, of course, uh, Roy Holiday, guys, who I don't know if you know, passed away in a plane accident. Um, his wife, uh, Brandy, was there to to, to talk, of, to do his speech. And it was very heartbreaking to hear her cry. She said in the beginning of her speech that she felt that this is what Roy would have said if he was here. Um, if you guys don't know who Roy Holiday is, you can YouTube it. He was one of the best to ever take, take the mound, guys. I mean... Um, there were times where he would go out there and you wouldn't be able to hit the ball no matter who you were. And, uh, he died, uh, in a, in a plane accident here locally here in Florida. Um, 
he played again for the Toronto Blue Jays and the Phillies who did spring training here uh, in the state of Florida. The, the Phillies do their spring training in Clearwater, which is about 10, 15 minutes, guys, from me where I live. And the Blue Jays play in Dunning, which is probably about 25 minutes with traffic. So both of those were kind of nearby and both organizations, uh, his wife thanked both organizations for all the love and support for Roy over the years. Um, so just wanted to touch on those guys. I mean, the Hall of Fame is cool. RJ was what they call. Him. Yes. Yes, he was. Yeah, I, I agree, Adam. He, he definitely was a stopper. I mean, there's no doubt. There's no doubt about that. He he was definitely one of those stoppers that uh, that um, if you needed you needed a, a, them to you know have a have a game to stop a team from scoring runs. Excuse me. You could definitely put him in that in that category. Um, so that now, guys, I have about 50 minutes left in my show. So. This is the time now I'm going to go ahead and talk about my topics from Facebook Live. I'm going to try to pay attention to my Facebook people here. Um, is there anybody that has any questions that they want to ask before I get into any of this stuff? Anybody out there that uh, wants to talk? I, I hope that Von Allen was on there. Talk about the Patriots. He didn't chime in. Maybe he, he ducked off while I was talking about the Bucks. But I did see something the other day, guys, about um, – the top 10 most uh, valuable franchises in sports. So I'm going to go ahead and read the list from one to 10. And you guys give me your opinion on what you think about these teams. Uh, number one guys is the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm, you can come on here. Hang on a minute. Go ahead. Share your camera and I'll bring you on here real quick. But I was going to go over, guys, the most uh, top 10 most valuable franchises, sports franchises uh, in, in the world here. Uh, number one, guys, is the Dallas. Yeah, I'm not sure what this is. The Dallas Cowboys guys are worth five billion dollars. The New York Yankees are worth four point six billion at number two. Real Madrid is at four point two four billion dollars. Uh, SC Barcelona, those are both team uh, soccer teams overseas. There's Adam. Um, the New York Knicks are worth four billion. Man, hey. what's up, buddy? Um, Manchester United is worth three point eight one billion dollars. That's owned, but they're owned by the, Buc the Buccaneer owners, the Glazers. The Patriots are worth $3.8 billion. The L.A. Lakers are worth $3.7. The Golden State Warriors are worth $3.5. And the Dodgers, the Los Angeles Dodgers and the New York Giants are tied at 10 at $3.3 billion. So those are the top 10 um, most valuable franchises in the world. What do you think about that list, Adam? I think it's probably right. I mean, I don't know. There's so much money in sports anymore. That's yeah, true. It's true. Echo. I, let me log out and come back. Okay? okay, no problem. I mean, so if you look at the list, guys, you got one, two, three NFL teams, and one two baseball teams, one, two, three basketball teams, and two soccer teams, three soccer teams on this list. So that's not bad. So usually all um, all the sports on here, other than hockey, is the only one that isn't listed on here. Let's see if I can put it back on here. It's, so, I mean, that's not bad. I mean, I, I have to admit that that's not bad that uh, – you got the Cowboys, the Patriots, and the Giants. So that's three NFL teams on here. You have the Warriors, the Lakers, and the Knicks. That's the NBA. Then you have the Dodgers and the Yankees. That's baseball. And then Real Madrid, 
Barcelona and Manchester United, they all are in the soccer. 